Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, today, uh, here in uh, Congress, the 18th Congress, we had the third technical working group on the Marawi compensation bills. Uh, the Marawi compensation bill is a little bit uh, uh, difficult uh, to push because of all the negative uh, comments from the different line agencies. Department of Finance uh, had several negative comments, Department of Budget Management, Task Force Bangon Marawi, the Commission on Audit, uh, DPWH. These uh, agencies uh, were, were not really favoring the approval of the Marawi compensation bills. So over the last uh, month, uh, we worked uh, hard. We had three meetings, and each meeting lasted for about three to four hours. Um, we were working very hard on finding ways to resolve the negative comments of the executive branch. And uh, I think today we may have at least had one step forward, and that's uh, um, and that's through the consultation and the agreement of the different authors of the Marawi Compensation Bill, specifically Hukia Jong, 1st District of Lano del Sur, Congressman Balindong, 2nd District of Lano del Sur, and Ami Sangkopan of Amin Party List, agreed to give me generally a free hand on drafting a proposed uh, substitute bill that we can submit in the Mother Committee when uh, Congress resumes. Uh, my target as TWG Chairman is to bring the Marawi Compensation Bills to the Senate. Um, so we have to win the support of the majority of the congressmen here in the 18th Congress. Uh, there are two, um, or actually three, issues that need to be resolved in the Marawi Compensation Bills. One is the unconstitutionality because it violates the equal protection uh, under the law uh, that's stated in our constitution. Um, and the reason there being is because the Marawi Compensation Bill targets uh, Marawi city residents. And in all of the different uh, disasters, whether man-made or natural, um, the national government um, rarely assists uh, private individuals. The focus of the national government is on the internally displaced persons or IDPs, not on private individuals and private property owners. Uh, and the economic managers are scared that if we provide or we approve the Marawi Compensation Bill, then that means because of the equal protection under the law, lahat ng mga private property owners, for example, sa Taal, North Cotabato, those that were affected by the earthquake, have the right to request compensation from the national government and that might lead to budgetary constraints. The second issue ng compensation bill is um, the creation of a compensation board. Uh, this is a little bit of an emotional issue for those that have been having a hard time uh, working with Task Force Bangon Marawi. The position of the national government is they don't see the need for a creation of a new independent compensation board because through the administrative order of President uh, Duterte creating Task Force Bangon Marawi, uh, the task force has everything needed, all the powers needed to provide um, or deliver the objectives uh, that are stated in the compensation bills. Um, so it's just a duplication and an unnecessary expense on behalf of the national government. That's one negative um, position of the DBM and of the Department of Finance. Um, the last issue that uh, we need to address is appropriations. Unfortunately, in Marawi City, um, the Office of Civil Defense and the uh, Task Force Bangon Marawi had difficulty in assessing the damage in Marawi City because we don't have or they, didn't, they couldn't find baseline data which is, uh, for example, tax mapping um, uh, or real property um, assessments. For those of uh, uh, the resource speakers, uh, speakers that are here, uh, why we are discussing this, and I'd like to point out COA, is um, you know, there's 30 billion or 50 billion that we have to present to the members of Congress. What if somebody asks, kailangan ba ninyo yan sa Marawi? 
Well, you know, because the task force Bangon Marawi in their position paper says the post-conflict needs assessment for the housing sector is only 8.175 billion. So where did you come up with the 30 billion? Now, normally when you, when my dealings with the Commission on Audit, the baseline da data would be the assessed, uh, uh, some sort of tax mapping or assessment of uh, real property uh, sa city. In the absence of that, what are we going to use? Yan ang problema dyan sa Marawi City. And from what I understand, when they did the post-conflict analysis, they came up with a different methodology using guidelines from DPWH, NHA, and supposedly in coordination with the local government units. And that's where we're at because we need to explain to the other members of Congress that if we ask for 30 billion, it's not too much. If we cannot justify that, then we are down to, we have to reduce the appropriation amount to 8.175 billion. So these are the things that we need to um, resolve over the break. Um, ideally, uh, when we resume session on May, uh, I can submit a proposed uh, substitute bill to the Mother Committee, the Committee on Disaster Management, and um, we'll get feedback from the members of the committee if they will accept my proposed um, substitute bill. Uh, this uh, affects us also in Salaluigan and Lano del Norte because um, uh, any lack of government assistance sa loob ng Lanao del Sur or Marawi City will eventually spill over to Lanao del Norte and to Iligan City. So, kailangan magtulong-tulong tayo sa mga Maranao na kapatid namin sa Marawi City. We need to find ways and use everything in our power to restore Marawi City to what it was once before the Marawi siege. So, that's an update from the 1st District of Lanao del Norte. Like, share, and subscribe! <laughs>